A year on from the shooting, organisations announcement that shooters in the UK will phase out lead shot over five years, and there has been progress. The big cartridge companies are rising to the challenge, partly because if they don't, they know that others will. There are problems. The lack of consultation with either shooters or the gun trade over the lead shot ban still leaves questions not just to be answered, but questions that haven't been asked, says Mark Crudgington, who runs the gunmaker George Gibbs in Wiltshire. In this film, I talk to Mark. I talk to firearms expert Andrew Venables, who defends lead alternatives, and I even buy a pot of hydrochloric acid and try to dissolve different kinds of shot. Mark has worked with metals all his life. He agrees that lead is poisonous, but says its effect on human health may not be as dramatic as some suggest. How many people are admitted to the hospital every year for spider bites? I'm told it's 120. And how many people are admitted to hospital every year for snake bites? Apparently it averages out at about 60. And how many people are admitted to hospital every year for, with lead poisoning? Well, over a 10-year period, it averages out to 15. And some years it's been down to very little. So wh where do they get that lead poisoning from? Well, they won't specify, but the, the statistics include people who work in the lead industry, which involves making batteries, smelting lead, the glass industry, um, where they're exposed to lead compounds in the air and the lungs are a very good route of transportation of lead compounds into the bloodstream. So there is no evidence that people are being admitted to hospital with lead poisoning from eating game with shot in it? Not that I can find. Uh, my MP who provided the table that you've got uh, could only find that. It was a hell of a struggle for him to find it. He had to actually search in the House of Commons library for it. Um, I've spoken to quite a few GPs and surgeons, none of whom have ever seen any cases of lead poisoning, so can't answer it. I've also spoken to my dentist and four or five customers who are dentists, and apparently dentists notice lead poisoning more quickly than anyone else because you get a blue line along your gum if you're suffering from lead poisoning, and none of them, some of which are nearing retirement, have ever seen any evidence of lead poisoning in all the time that they've been practicing. But that's only a tiny, obviously a tiny snapshot of what goes on. But I would have hoped that the National Health Service could give some answers. I have tried and written to them, but no replies have yet been forthcoming. Did you ask them if they've seen any other kind of metal poisoning during that time? No, I concentrated on lead. Um, I know that there are quite a few, there's a lot of instances, in fact, of iron poisoning, but most of that seems to come from iron supplements. Although iron itself, of which steel shot is made of malleable iron, is more dissolvable in the hydrochloric acid which is in our stomach than lead is. Lead basically isn't in our stomachs long enough to have any reaction from what the science says. Um, whereas iron it can do. There are, there are reports of ball bearings being stuck in people's duodenums and their appendixes which have caused quite serious poisoning. Uh, but again, they're, they're, they're very few. The, I think the cases of metal poisoning full stop are very, very low. This whole thing it just sort of beggars belief. If, if lead was as poisonous as some people are trying to make out, and especially the nine organisations, um, there must be some evidence to show that it is this terribly dangerous metallic compound. I mean, metallic lead, according to the science that I find, is pretty inert. You have to boil it in acid and various other things to get it to react at all. I mean, if you just imagine we've got probably billions of tonnes of lead on the roofs of all sorts of buildings and houses in this country. Think of Buckingham Palace, think of Westminster Abbey. If lead was soluble and easily available to living organisms, we'd have poisoned the whole country by now, in my amateur estimation. I, you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I'm trying to look at what evidence is available and trying to make some sense of it. It's worth bringing in some pictures from viewer Perry Beale at this point. This shows how grey squirrels ate the lead flashing on his roof. Perry doesn't know whether they died of lead poisoning. He knows that most of them didn't because he shot them. 
Now, while Mark makes the case that we have been rolled over on the subject of lead shot, others see this as an opportunity to try different materials in shotgun cartridges. Here's Andrew Venables. Obviously, there's people who are going, no, hang on, no, hang on, we, we, we like what we've got. We like what we've had for the last 100, 200 years. Let's just stick with that. I agree with Mark Crudgington. Right? I don't want a lead ban. I don't seek a lead ban. Where we differ, and we agree to differ, is that I think the best way to move forwards in the face of an almost inevitable lead ban isn't to stand like King Canute being drowned by the tide, isn't to spend millions of pounds of NGOs, members' money, trying to defend the scientifically peer-reviewed indefensibility of lead in food in any form, full stop. Ironically, Andrew's rifle range in West Wales sits on the site of one of the biggest deposits of lead in the UK. This country was famous for lead mining. Um, in fact, some of the great grouse moors, uh, such as Lead Hills, and a lot of uh, uh, grouse moors in Swaledale, um, are on what are very famous lead mines that go back some 2,000 years of use. Um, now, galena, from what I can gather, is lead sulphate, which isn't water soluble, so it can sit there quite happily. But if any acid gets on it, then it changes and it can then make its way into, the, um, uh, into plants and animals. Um, because again, it's a compound of lead. And when you smelt lead, you change it from lead sulphate to lead. But lead compounds have been used for certainly a couple of thousand years by humans in various forms. The Romans used to use lead acetate, which is known as sugar lead, to sweeten their wine. In fact, it was used um, legally up until the 1980s, I believe, to sweeten certain wines. Um, it was also used in various other processes and um, was used as in Grecian 2000, men's hair colouring, until 2015 apparently. Now again, um, that's a lead compound which is soluble and easily absorbable by the human body. Um, and yet nobody's even looking at that. As an oxide, or in the soluble form that it was in leaded fuel, it just gets out and carries on in the environment at a level where in most cities in the world still using leaded fuel, pregnant women are breathing it in, kids are breathing it in, and in an average Nigerian city where they haven't banned lead, the children are three to five points IQ lower and that was the same in Manchester and Birmingham and London and New York and Chicago and everywhere where there was lead in petrol. Yes, there's lead in the ground, but it is not going directly into the food. It is not like shooting it into meat, having lead particles going into the meat, having that go into the food chain. There's trace amounts of lead in a lot of potato crops. They monitor it carefully. Is the fact that there's trace amounts of lead in some potato crops a reason to keep using lead bullets? No, it isn't. Because we can do something about the lead that enters the food chain in meat. They monitor the lead that's in vegetables, the lead that's in all sorts of things. It's at extremely low levels there. And we're moving forwards on that basis. If metallic lead itself I can find virtually no evidence to say that it is directly poisonous. It has to change from metallic lead into either an organic or an inorganic lead compound. Now again, I'm not a chemist, so please don't ask me the difference because I'm not entirely sure. Um, and there are all sorts of lead compounds. There are a list of about 70 or 80 different ones that are used in industry. And the Romans started it, actually, that's why the Romans came to Wales. The people who smelted lead in Rome died. The people who ate off lead and pewter plates in the Roman Empire died. Ever used ammunition from a company called Midway Bullets? If you're my sort of age, you might have done. 
the entire team sickened and many of them died of lead poisoning. Um, lead is a very important um, reagent in industry or its compound. I keep saying lead. This is maybe where actually the problem is coming. Well a slightly unconvincing scientific experiment coming up. I've got these four different kinds of cartridge, tungsten, lead, bismuth and steel and this hydrochloric acid which uh, is very much like what you get inside your stomach. So we're going to try adding this to this to see what happens. The reason this test is pointless is that your gastric juices contain lots of other chemicals as well as hydrochloric acid, that you digest your food at 37.5 degrees centigrade, which our test does not, and that, as many people will point out, metal passes through you pretty harmlessly. So we leave it for an hour, and what do we get? First, let's hear Mark and Andrew disagree on this one. The science and the peer-reviewed science on what happens if you shoot animals with lead bullets or lead pellets and the lead pellets get into raptors and other birds, or the food gets into the food chain, is absolutely proven. It's there, it's black and white, it's peer reviewed. There are not the same concerns about zinc, about tin, about copper, and there are not the same concerns or scientifically proven issues about these areas around us. Where well, you're right, the, the, the lamb grows on the hills, it goes into the food chain. The lead obviously isn't moving in that direction. But if you squeeze the trigger, and you move a fragmenting lead projectile into meat and you want to put that into the human food chain, the options are becoming increasingly limited on that one and I believe that the door will have closed on it within five years, which is why I believe it's best to be ready. I've probably eaten in my lifetime very many shotgun pellets and probably very many fragments of lead from the deer that I've shot and butchered myself and consumed. There's lots of people who seem to be saying that this is the big problem. Um, and from what I can understand, if you have a very small piece of lead, it can be affected by the stomach acid and you will get um, lead chloride formed, but a tiny, tiny amount which sticks to the lead. It forms a crust around the lead, whether it's a lead pellet or a little tiny piece of lead or even a big piece of lead. Um, and unless it is knocked off and then broken down, it still can't enter the bloodstream. But again, you'd need to speak to a medical expert to confirm that, okay, you know, it's, uh, it's only something I'm, all I'm doing is digging around and trying to find out, make sense of all this, because I mean, I'm nearly 60, I've shot all my life, I've eaten game all my life, I work with lead, I've worked with lead for the last 42 years um, as a gunsmith, um, I feel perfectly healthy. Perhaps a little cheekily, Mark suggests we should call for the mass testing for lead poisoning of shooters and people who enjoy game and venison. Because if it is the problem that the anti-lead ammunition people are making out, there should be a huge number of people in this country with quite serious um, levels of lead in their blood. So what have we got? Well over here on my left your right we have lead in hydrochloric acid. And what's it doing? It's producing a few bubbles and some scum, which is not what the internet said. The internet said actually that uh, it wouldn't really react with hydrochloric acid. Uh, but if you put lead shot into something like your stomach contents, well, maybe that's what you get. Next one is tungsten and oh, hardly a flicker. There's a, maybe a couple of bubbles coming off. That's the rock steady eddy of metals. If you can afford it, £2.70 per cartridge, but uh, no reaction whatsoever with your stomach contents. This one, however, steel shot, particularly nasty. It produces ferrous chloride, iron chloride, and that is poisonous to uh, people. And that yellow colour should tell you just how nasty it is, especially offset by the blue of the Lyle Vale Express cartridge. And finally, over here on the right is bismuth. Bismuth and hydrochloric acid produces bismuth chloride. There's a, yeah, a little bit of bubble action there. Bismuth chloride, butter of bismuth, you use it for treating syphilis, if any of you have got a syphilis problem. Now Waitrose banned lead shot in game and Mark wrote to them. The uh, supermarket that originally stopped selling game or announced it was going to stop selling game shot with lead, um, I wrote to them and asked them why and they came back with this answer. Thank you again for your email Mark. We have stopped using lead shots 
in, as lead is a neurotoxin with no agreed safe levels of exposure, we will be using alternatives such as steel or bismuth. Now both steel and bismuth are listed, like lead, as heavy metals and neurotoxins, which nobody seems to have looked into. Nobody has produced any research to show whether steel, which is actually malleable iron shot, could have a detrimental effect on either humans, birds or animals, or the environment. All I know is that pieces of iron left in the environment are viewed as very bad. They break down, iron oxide is very toxic to humans and animals. Um, iron, if it is dipped into hydrochloric acid, which is what we've got in our stomach, forms um, ferric chloride, which is a deadly poison. Um, I know there's a report of um, the meat grinding industry in America where they had to change the grinding wheels, so to speak, um, because there were too many bits of iron getting into the ground meat that was used in hamburgers and they felt that there were cases of people entering hospital with um, kidney cancer, which apparently is a side effect of uh, ferric chloride and this was a possible cause. That kind of answer makes Andrew angry. Some people are looking at it and thinking, OK, so um, they're telling us they want to ban lead. I know, we'll prove that copper's toxic as well. Well, that's bloody wonderful, folks, because A, copper in a metal form, as used in all your modern water pipes, is just fine. Copper, if you ingest it, does not harm you. You cannot digest it, OK? Copper is in vitamin pills. It's a nutritional supplement. Try buying a lead pill as a nutritional supplement. And it's fine out there. Food grade zinc, food grade tin, bismuth, steel shot. All of these things are entirely food grade acceptable. You cut your food up with steel knives. Okay? You don't use pewter plates anymore because there's a lot of lead in pewter. So my, my view is, let's move forwards. Some other people's view is slightly more confused, I suppose, in my own personal opinion, because if you attack copper, you're attacking something you've been firing wrapped around your lead bullets ever since granddad was a boy or grandma was a girl. And if you try to find fault with the things we're moving forwards with in defence of the indefensible, you're weakening the case of shooters. You're not helping, you're not strengthening anything. Finally, let's turn to wildlife. Reports on the effects of lead on wildlife show that it kills, whether that's wild fowl eating lead shot like grits to grind up food in their gizzards, or raptors eating lead fragments in the gralic of deer left out on hillsides. Mark says that those reports may not be what they seem. In the 1970s, the um, Fish and Wildlife Service in America felt that there were a lot of duck dying um, on the Great American Flyway um, from the north to the south of America and that they felt this was caused by lead poisoning. The birds that they were picking up and examining that were dead uh, showed uh, signs of lead poisoning and they also discovered lead pellets in their gizzards and obviously the gizzard is the, is the first stomach which is used to grind up food before it goes into the main stomach. And they were saying that grinding up this lead caused lead poisoning in the ducks. Now there's another school of thought, uh, which is uh, they used to put uh, tetraethyl lead in petrol. Now obviously America is the home of the motor car. Um, and for every uh, US gallon, there were three cc's of tetraethyl lead added to it, which was an anti-knock agent for the uh, engine. Now when tetraethyl lead is burnt, you get lead bromide and lead chloride formed, both of which are soluble, both of which are highly poisonous. They're only slightly soluble, they, they take a long time to break down in water in fact, and water needs to be warm to improve its solubility according to the chemistry papers. Um, now. I know in this country in the 1980s, 90 million litres of petrol were used, burnt, every single day. If you sit down and do a rough fag packet 
calculation, that means around three to 400 tonnes of lead bromide and lead chloride were deposited on the roads and in the air in this country. Well, 400 tonnes of lead bromide is the same weight as the payload from 17 million 12-bore shotgun cartridges. It's quite a lot. If you visualise, 400 tonnes to most people doesn't sound like much. You visualise it as 17 million shotgun cartridges, brother, that's a huge heap. Now all of that lead uh, compound presumably washed off roads and everything else into eventually into watercourses and eventually it will build up in uh, estuaries and in the mud in rivers where the bottom of the food chain starts and it can maybe like DDT, it's only a thought, can work its way up through the food chain through aquatic plants and snails and such like and eventually, if eaten by ducks and such like, could be the cause of lead poisoning, rather than the lead pellets, which are found in some ducks, but not all. Um, you know, it's very easy to see something big, like a lead pellet, and think, ah, that's a problem. But it might be something else. I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying nobody's looked into it. The Game Conservancy, I don't think, have. The World Fund and Wetland Trust haven't, so far as I can find. They've just hung their hat on the first thing, it appears to me, that has come into their view. I mean, uh, one of the leading anti lead shot, uh, lead ammunition um, biologists, Debbie Payne, was interviewed by Jim Al Khalili on The Life Scientific. And she was very specific at the beginning of her interview that she started pursuing the um, burden of lead in ducks and geese especially because she was studying the Canada geese in Hyde Park in London, which carried a very heavy lead burden. Now, there hasn't been a shotgun fired in Hyde Park probably for 300 years, maybe 350 years, and I doubt whether there's very much lead shot available to the Canada geese, either in the ponds and lakes or in the grass. But she came out and said, most specifically, they were getting the lead from grazing on plants that had been affected by the, um, uh, the, the burning of lead in petrol. And she and several others uh, pressurised the government into removing tetraethyl lead from petrol as a result. But that is the last time she mentioned lead compounds in context of her work. Um, like I say, I, 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 that's what actually, it's, I can blame Debbie Payne for me starting to look into all this because she really fired my imagination with these lead compounds poisoning what's quite a big bird, a Canada goose. Um, and it, was, it, was, it really was, you know, life altering for me. Canada geese, the last time I looked, have wings. Canada geese in Hyde Park may have been other places. Canada geese may well have ingested shot on riverbanks. They may have ingested fishing weights. They may have ingested all sorts of things, little lead shot from fishing weights. It may well be that it's the toxic legacy in London's ponds and in the mud from the pre-lead-free petrol time. Yes, great, it's fantastic to know about that, but it doesn't mean we can carry on shooting lead around the countryside if society decides they don't want that. Less than 2% of the population of any European country is involved in hunting or shooting. Less than 2%. The other 98% all vote for the politicians and everything else we get. And if we think that a small proportion of that 2% can have its way against the 98% who just don't care about hunting and us and animals and shooting and all the rest of it, and maybe the other one or one and a quarter percent of the hunters who are engaging with the whole process and thinking, yep, do you know what? Let's move forward and make things better and as good as we can. Let's be sustainable. Let's evolve. If that very small percentage of people wants to put up a fight and become extinct, Honestly, that's going to have to be their problem. Mark wants scientists to look again at the issue of all metals in ammunition and whether or not they're poisonous. While Andrew says the science is there and it's time to move on. I would hope that science would take a pragmatic view 
and people like the um, Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust would think, well, maybe we can look into this and maybe we can actually find some science to prove, to prove their point, maybe. Because there's no science that I can find at the moment which shows that metallic lead is the problem it is being made out to be. If you dig up a body that was buried before the Industrial Revolution and you test the bones in the skeleton and you set that as level X, okay? By the time we banned leaded petrol in the West, the lead in human bones had gone up some 200 times, okay? The fact that we've done a lot to try to address that, the fact that we're still dealing with the toxic le legacy of that is no reason or excuse to carry on doing it in another way. We can't, we can't defend ourselves by saying, there's already a problem, please leave me shooting my antique Damascus barrel shotgun, because the whole market is being affected. You can't partly do something. They're moving forwards with lead. I know some of us still have lead pipes in our houses, but all new houses since date X, that wasn't happening, it's all plastic, it's all copper now. There comes a date when they draw a line in the sand and go, right, what's happened before that? We're dealing with that, but we're moving forwards now in the knowledge of peer-reviewed science and the way we want to be in 50 years' time, 20 years' time. So, what do you think? Comments below, please. <laughs>